Hi everyone, I'm Rob Horlacher from Project Sandbox, a University of Lethbridge Library initiative. In this video, we're going to be looking at the DSLR camera. In the camera kit, you will find the Canon camera, the 18 to 135 millimeter lens, a UV filter to protect the lens, a lens cap, a battery charger, the battery, a USB to mini USB cable to transfer all of your files from the camera to a computer, and then you will have the camera strap as well. Although there's many parts that come with the camera, when you get the camera in the kit, it should generally come as a complete unit. Um, the one thing that you will have to put together though is you'll need to put the battery inside of the camera. To do that, there's a little door on the bottom. You just pop it open, um, look to see where the contacts are on the battery and the little prongs are on here. And then you just slip the battery in and close the door and you're good to go. Um, so now that you know all the parts of the camera and how to put the battery in, um, Let's move on to actually using the camera. So to take pictures with the camera, the first thing you need to do is turn it on. Um, to do that, you will just flip this switch just to the on position at the very top, just like that. Um, you'll also want to make sure you remove the lens cap right away so that you're actually getting the footage that you're looking for. Um, once you do those steps, you can look at this top dial and if you notice, there's a whole bunch of different symbols on there. If you're unsure of what those mean, um, you can flip through them and on the screen, it will actually tell you um, what those settings are. So depending on what you're shooting, you might actually want to select one of those features. If you're uncomfortable with choosing any of them, you can just set the camera to auto and it'll do everything you want it to do. Um, for the purposes of this video, we're going to look specifically at the manual setting because that's where you actually have the greatest control over what's happening with the camera. The first thing to talk about if we're talking about the manual settings is, and this might be hard for you to see, so I'm going to flip this on the back. And I'm going to turn down the brightness a little bit. Alright, so... In order to make the changes that you would like to the camera, um, say the first thing we want to change is the aperture size, which is this uh, f5.0. So one thing you can do is you can actually drag it along this line to change it. Or if you'd rather press buttons, you just have to hold down this AV button. If you notice, this is selecting this. And while that button's pressed down, you can move this selector ring. As you do it, it's going to move your aperture size either up or down. At the very bottom, you will have the widest aperture, which means the most light comes in. At the other end, you'll have the smallest aperture, which means the least amount of light comes in. The next thing to look at is if you're not pressing this button at all, or if you're just having the top line selected. This is your shutter speed, so that's how quick the shutter actually opens and closes. On the far right, you can see that it'll take a picture at one four thousandth of a second. Um, this will mean that the picture will be very dark. Um, but if you're in a very bright area, that might be what you're going for. And then at the other end, you'll see it goes all the way up to um, 30 seconds, which means that when you press the shutter button, your shutter will actually be open for 30 seconds. Um, so lots of light will come in. Or if you want it open for longer than 30 seconds, you change it to your bulb setting. And the bulb will stay open as long as you have the button depressed for the shutter button anyway. The next thing to know is how you change your ISO settings. So. Um, if you're not familiar what ISO means, ISO means basically how pixelated your photo is going to look. But the more pixelated your photo looks, the more light will actually be exposed on that photo. Um, versus if you want it to be a very clear photo, um, it'll be darker. So 100 is at the bottom end of um, that. So 100 it'll be darker, but it'll also be very clear. Um, to change your ISO settings, uh, you can do this in a couple ways. One, you can just touch the screen and move the bar. The other 
is you can actually press this ISO button on the top of your camera. Once that's pressed, you can move the bar with the selector wheel once again. So 100's at the bottom, all the way to 25,600 at the top. So 25,600 will let in the most light, but it'll be a very pixelated looking photo. And let's change that back to 100, or you can even set it to auto if you'd rather have the camera figure it out itself. The next thing to know is how you can actually tell if your photo is exposed properly. So if you look, after I press the shutter button at the top, there's going to be a little bar that appears at the very top of the camera LCD. Um, this is your exposure indicator. So what you can do is you can move your selector knob to the left or right, and you'll see a little tick moving either left or right on the bar. This shows you if your photo is overexposed or underexposed. If your bar, if the selector is all the way to the right hand side, that means your photo will be overexposed. If it's all the way to the left, it'll be underexposed. To adjust that, you'll just have to play with those three settings that I just showed you um, to get that bar in the middle. If you would like to know a little bit more about what all these are doing, um, make sure you watch the So You Want to Take a Picture video tutorial on YouTube. I will go over that a little bit more into what those are actually doing. Um, so, after you have all of your focus figured out, the next thing you want to do is go to your lens. So, you can change it to, let's get it as close as possible so you can see it. So you can change it to, it's a little blurry, I apologize for that, but you can change it to autofocus or manual focus. Um, you can have your stabilizer on, which means that it'll kind of compensate for slight handshakes and stuff like that. Um, and if you can't move your lens out whatsoever, this lock switch on the bottom might be engaged. So when it's engaged, you can't do anything. When you take it off, you can zoom in your camera once again. Um, then a couple other things with the lens. This is your focus ring at the very front of it. Um, so this is how you can focus your pictures. And then this bigger one is your zoom lens, or your zoom ring. Um, which allows you to go obviously closer or farther away from your subject. A couple other things to mention, if you want your flash, there's a button right there. If you press it, you'll notice the flash comes up when you take a photo. Um, so that's how you start the flash. And then finally, the last thing to notice is your white balancing. So how you do white balancing is one of two ways. One, you can just hit this up arrow and you can select whichever uh, kind of environment you're set up for. So whether you're using your flash, um, using a fluorescent light, um, using a tungsten light, cloudy day, shade, or in sunlight. Um, you can also select auto white balance or you can go all the way to the right and use a custom setting. If you are using a custom setting, what you need to do is you need to go into your menu system, then into shooting settings, then you want to find white balance and custom white balance. So what custom white balance does is if you take a picture of a white piece of paper, it will take the color data from that white piece of paper and balance your camera accordingly. So if you click on that, um, you'll notice that the pictures I just took are showing up. If you took a picture of a white piece of paper, this is where you would select that and hit set. And then the camera will tell you if, it's a, if the picture will work or if it won't work. Finally, when you have everything figured out with your camera, you just press the shutter button and depress it completely and that's how you'll take your photo. And then your photo's taken. Um, what we're going to do, since this has popped up, um, what you can do is you can turn off this burst shooting mode and the timer. Where you do that is just on the bottom. So in your quick links, you can just select that, select that bottom area. And if you want to take one photo, you just choose right there. This is saying that after 10 seconds, it's going to take a bunch of photos. We don't want that though. We just want to do one photo. 
And that's how you use the camera to take a picture. To learn a little bit more about what all of these settings do, um, like the shutter speed, ISO settings, and, and aperture size, you can reference the so you want to take a picture video. Um, now, let's talk a little bit how to use the camera for video. So, just like when you take a picture, you first need to flip on the camera, but instead of going to on, we're going to go to the camera, the, the video camera at the very top. Um, once that's done, you can take your lens cap off. Um, and then, once again, exactly like the uh, pictures, the next thing we want to do is we want to select which mode we're going to be in. Um, so although you can still select all of the different options, at least in theory, um, it doesn't actually give you the same range of options. There's actually only five. So there's one option if you go to the scene mode. Um, this is probably your most limited for control. Um, Creative Filters offers you some different options. Um, it's like doing old time movie, stuff like that. Um, manual mode, just like with the pictures, that's gonna give you the most control. Um, if you go to AV, TV, and P, it's all gonna give you the same options. And those options are basically to make the film a little brighter or a little bit darker. Um, your next set is um, pretty much everything else. They're all just gonna set the camera to automatic features. But much like the photos, we're gonna change it to manual mode because this is gonna give us the most control. Um, just like when you take a photo, you can set the settings to exactly, um, you can set all the exact same settings. So you can change your ISO, you can change your shutter speed, and you can change your aperture size in this section. Something you can do with video that you can't do with pictures is to adjust the sound recording levels of this. To do this, you want to go into the menu system. And then once you're in menu, um, you want to go to shooting settings and hit OK. I'm going to turn down the brightness again because it's a little hard to see the screen. With either the up and down arrows right here or with the actual screen, you can select where you want to go. So we want to go into, uh, let's see if I can bring that up, sound recording. So when you're in sound recording, um, if you notice, you can see the bars moving up and down. So that's what my voice is doing right now. Um, but say we want to either increase or decrease the sensitivity of that sound. So you can set it to auto, manual, or disable it completely at the top. Um, but if you want to change the sensitivity, you want to click on this area. So you can move it up to make it very sensitive. And if you notice as I'm doing this, you can see the sensitivity really getting out of control with it going into the red. Or you can lower it down to the other side. Um, to make the sound not as uh, strong as it is on the opposite side. Um, but we want it to just be at a pretty decent level. When you're satisfied with what you've chosen, you just hit enter and then you're back into here. Um, if it's a windy day, you can go into this setting and add the wind filter. So you can change it to auto or disable. And then the attenuator. The attenuator just makes it so if the bar goes all the way to the right, it won't actually go into the red. So that's normally a good thing to enable. You might also want to connect our audio kits to the camera. I'm going to adjust the brightness once again to make it so you can see everything else a little bit better. So how you adjust our audio kits is you want it set up to the shotgun microphone setup. Um, if you're curious a little bit more about the audio kits, make sure you check out the audio kit uh, tutorial that we've created. So with the shotgun setup, you'll see that there's this little area. This will attach right onto the clip on the top of the DSLR camera. So you can just slide it on top just like that. And then you just want to tighten down this knob. This is what's actually going to hold the audio mic onto the camera. Um, then what you want to do is on the other side of the camera, you'll see a little input for a microphone. It'll say MIC. So you want to take this cable 
and plug that directly into there. Then, when you're recording sound, it's going to come from the audio kit instead of the camera. Um, what you'll want to do as well is you'll want to turn the audio kit on. And then in your settings, we can go to sound recording again and actually see what's coming from here. Um, so to make it louder or quieter, we'll just a knob, adjust this knob at the very top of the audio kit. And this will either make it louder or quieter on our camera. Um, once again, if you want to know a little bit more about this though, check out the audio kit video because I'm not going to go over it again in this one. Once all of your settings are chose, you have this focus just like you like. You can see on the LCD screen that you have like a nice video set up exactly the way you want it to be. You just need to hit this little button right here on the back of the camera, in which case you'll see that on this screen there's little red dots. Oop, you can't see it. Well, there you go. So there's a little red dot, which means that it's currently recording. At this point, you can touch any place on the screen too, and where you touch, that's what's gonna be in focus. Um, so, although I didn't go over it, once again, just keep in mind that you can actually change the exposure and focus with all the different settings on this camera. But that's pretty much how you use the camera to record video. Once you're done recording, we can now move all of the pictures or shots that you took onto the computer. To transfer files to the computer, the first thing you need to do is on the side of this camera, open up the side flap. You'll see a mini USB plug in there. Let's move it over and up. There we go, mini USB plug. So with the one that's supplied, you just want to plug it right in to the camera. Um, you'll notice that nothing's happening yet, but once we turn the camera on, you'll see that the Canon EOS Rebel T7i disappeared. When you click on that, you'll see the folder. And then you generally want to go to DCIM, Canon 100, and then you'll see all of the content that was just um, taken with the camera. In which case, you can select it all and drag it where you want to on your actual computer. Once you're done dragging, you just want to make sure you turn off the camera and then it'll be good. So prior to returning your camera to the service desk, um, there's one last thing I wanted to mention to you and that's how to format your memory card. Um, before you do this, you want to be 200% sure that you've taken all of your footage and pictures off the camera because after you do this step, um, it'll be totally erased and you won't be able to get it back whatsoever. So to do this, you first want to turn on the camera and then press the menu button at the very top. It'll bring you into the menu screen where you'll hit OK. And then uh, Actually, we don't want to go into shooting settings. We want to go into function settings. Once you're in function settings, once again, I'm just controlling it with this. Um, you want to go to format card, then hit OK. And then your card will be formatted, which means there's no more images on your camera. Once this is done, it is now um, able to return to the service desk. So that's what I have for you today. Just remember to keep being creative with the camera and to press all of the buttons because that's the only way you really get familiar with a piece of equipment. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hopefully it was helpful with your journey with this camera. And if you want to keep up to date with videos that are coming out of the library, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page and if you would like to continue your journey with Project Sandbox videos, um, you can click on one of the videos on the screen right now. Uh, once again, thank you very much, and I will see you at the next video, or workshop, or just if I see you around the university. See you later.